If you're watching this video, it's because you are really into vending machine culture in Japan or you like snacks and food just as much as I do. So I just want to give whoever you are a warm welcome. Today we are in Hiroshima, Japan, which is kind of my backyard. It's about an hour away from where I live and we're visiting the only pizza vending machine in Japan. Now, if there just happens to be another vending machine located in Japan, please leave one in the comments. But as far as I know, this is the only one to exist, which makes it that much more special. Vending machine culture in Japan just might be one of my favorite things to explore and try. It just makes everything so convenient and there's always something interesting to find. Now this specific vending machine has two different types of pizzas. The button on the left is for a margarita pizza. It runs you about 980 yen, which is about nine US dollars. And the button on the right is for a four cheese pizza, which is 1,280 yen, which is about 12 US dollars. So this is gonna be ready in three minutes. And I'm just trying to see the inside. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, wow. This part kind of makes me giggle. The machine, which is actually called the Pizza Self 24, is manufactured in Italy. The company's website describes the Pizza Self 24 as a real pizza cooking and food corner, and it can be stocked with up to 84 pizzas and snacks. This specific machine was installed by a truck driver who loves late night snacks. Whether your pizza is for here or to go, they do provide you with the utensils that you need, like a plastic pizza cutter and napkins. We have 30 seconds left. Looks like you can uh, grab your drinks right here. I hear something happening. This is so cool. I'm scared of If you've decided to take your pizza to go, these are directions that you can follow to fold your box so that it actually closes on itself. I'm not going to lie, it was a little tricky and some of the parts were sticky. I thought the box was going to rip apart. But that's totally fine. We are planning to eat it here anyway. And make sure you take the metal tray out and leave it. It's really good. It's delicious. Okay. You guys should try it. I started eating the pizza and I realized it just kind of left you guys hanging. And I need to give you like my actual final thoughts on the pizza. Now, if you are visiting Hiroshima, Japan, and you are a foodie, and you are really interested in doing like some type of food tour in Hiroshima, I definitely recommend hitting up the vending machine or if you're in the area and wanted to share it with some friends. Now, if you're in Hiroshima and you wanna do sightseeing and you're only there for a short time and this vending machine just is out of the way, I don't really recommend making a special trip to go unless you're doing it for the experience. The pizza wasn't mind-blowing by any means. It was good, um, but I don't feel the need to go back again unless we have friends or family visiting. I'm really glad that I did it, and I'm excited to share it with you guys because, of course, it's interesting. It's a pizza vending machine. I actually flipped this video around. My husband and I started the day in Hiroshima going to a bookstore and getting coffee and going to a castle. So I'm going to show you that part of the video now if you want to hang out. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. It helps my channel out more than you know. Anyway, let's get into everything that happened before the pizza vending machine. I love visiting bookstores while traveling. I love looking at the different categories and the covers and how their books are just set up. 
Even though we can't read a lot of the things that are on the shelves, we do spend a little bit of time in the small English section and then we spend a lot of time in the kids section. That's kind of where our Japanese skills are most relatable. So we like to read those books and practice our Japanese. You read it from the front to the back. Just found this little vacuum. Just a, like little messes. This is so cute. If you follow me on Instagram or had a chance to catch up on any of my other vlogs, then you know that my husband and I live in the Inaka, which is the Japanese countryside. It's been quite some time since we've made it to a big city to do any kind of shopping because of the pandemic. And when we do go shopping in a big city, it's typically a lot of window shopping because it's more expensive, but I love coming and looking around anyway. The displays are beautiful, the furniture, the products, everything's just very aesthetic and different to me. And I just love it so much. So let's go check out the mall and see what we have. The Disney collection. Yeah, they don't really have anything that fits our dog. It's all little dogs. Wait, I found one. <laughs> I could get this for him. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that would fit our dog. It's a cat, but he looks interesting. If you want to get a pet in Japan, you would typically go to a pet store like the one we were just kind of in. It just didn't feel appropriate to film these things. And the animals are all on display. The employees looked like they really cared for the pets and they really did look like they were well taken care of. And I'm sure they'd be adopted fairly soon. It is also really expensive. There were small puppies going for about 3,000 US dollars. These are cute. You could buy like this little stool and then get like a turtle or a monkey cover. Looks like that. So cute. This is what all the restaurants look like here. There's lots of sweets, pastries, coffee, tea shops, hamburgers. Tonkatsu, ramen, tempura. They have Converse. They're a little bit more here. About 60-ish dollars instead of 50. I'm so inspired by the street fashion, by the younger demographics, especially coming to a big city like Hiroshima, because we don't really have street fashion in the countryside. The mannequins and the style kind of gives me like gender fluid vibes, very oversized and comfortable and playful. I found this brand called Nico and when I shared it on Instagram, everybody was like, Caitlin, why haven't you heard of this brand before? And a lot of it was one size fits most. So I'm gonna try on a couple of their pieces really quick. The store is called Nico and, and it's literally amazing inside. Super cute. I ended up getting that, that cardigan in gray. shopping my husband came to the game section so we're gonna try to find him soda, 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 soda. 
rigged. Watch this. It's rigged. Watch this. It's going to drop him. Watch. It's going to get to the top. My type of game. Pizza flavored potato chips, little chocolate biscuits, more chips and snacks. They always have so many cute things for kids. The kids stores here are amazing. Like look how cute this is. Like little rubber shoes. This is it. Get in there. Oh, you Get in there. Little shoes. So you can leave your shoes here to play in the kids' area. I love exploring the area with all the restaurants and the food and the grocery stores because you really never know what you're going to find. My favorite places to stop are going to be the bakeries. The bread in Japan is so delicious and it always smells so good and it's made fresh. I also love looking at the replica food. These are all displays outside of restaurants and the restaurants will have their meals replicated in these wax displays. They look exactly like the items on the menu and they look real. Mm, that looks so good. Mm. Mm. I ordered this Daigaku Frappuccino. Oh, this looks so delicious. So she told me next time to order it with almond milk. This looks good. It's topped with black sesame seeds. There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am? So beautiful. The one right under the it's monstrous. This looks like a painting. That one's huge. Look at that guy. The <gasps> orange one? That one. This dude. This monster. Straight below. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. He's chunky. He's twice the size of all of them. photo shoot happening down here. I don't know what it's for. Maybe it's a wedding? It's like a peaceful little garden and nobody's over here. It's a perfect view of the castle. <laughs> They make the best greeting cards here in Japan. I love these so much. I've never seen like pop-up greeting cards before, so they're a lot of fun to send to 
friends and family. Look how cute this is. It's a portable chopstick training toy. These teeny tiny pieces of plastic sushi. And then I saw that they had Jenga, which I thought was really cool. But then I saw this tower. So it's like Jenga, but sushi. It has English instructions. So we're gonna get one and play it. It's about time for my husband and I to wrap things up and head back home to the countryside. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this week's vlog. There's kind of a lot going on in it, so I'd love to hear from you what your favorite part was, if you want me to make a more detailed video about a certain topic. I personally love anything food related and I'm trying to make an effort to get more into the city so that we can have more experiences. Anyway, make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you next Sunday.